it. Let's do it. It's time for another episode. Coffee and Beats is back. I'm your musical barista, Rod the Magnificent, and I'm back with another episode of album reviews. I've been hearing the chatter, okay? I've been hearing the chatter. Oh, man, you're doing Adele uh, reviews. You're doing Billie Eilish. All these pop albums. All these pop albums. Where's the hip-hop? Where's the underground? Where's the love? This is the episode that you have been waiting for. For those who've been itching for something they haven't heard before. And, And that was my whole purpose of starting Coffee and Beats. Yes, I am going to cover the popular albums, but I'm also going to give you those albums that you might not know that's out, that's pretty good, pretty hot off the presses, and worth checking out. And this is the episode for you, so before I get into that, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that bell for notifications, hit the like, and also share this with your loved ones, because I'm sure they will all love to hear this. Now... Let's get right into it with our first album review. And the first album up to bat is none other than one of my personal favorite producers, Nightmares on Wax. And that is from producer George Evelyn, who is better known as his stage name. And he just dropped an album this year, late this year. Shout out to Freedom. And this is a deeply personal project built for George Evelyn, who is known for more of his old school sampling, his old school 1920s, 1930s, 50s records, swing dancing. He samples a lot of stuff from old musicals and put them over boom bap beats. And here we have a different direction that he's gravitating towards. The result is an exploration of musical and personal freedom and Nightmares on Wax deepest record to date. Now this album features 15 tracks clocking in at roughly around under an hour and this album also features plenty of contributions from artists such as Wolfgang Hafner, Hale Supreme, Pip Millet most notably and also Mara TK. This is just to name a few and this is a very pleasant and surprising nice listen from Nightmares on Wax in regards to the direction that he went. And here we see Wax aiming for more of a throwback old to the early 70s and this gives us a soundtrack like feel uh, to the record as if you're listening or listening to a soundtrack to like a black exploitation movie on different pockets of the record. You can also definitely hear some Curtis Mayfield-like influences throughout this record as well. Now, Wax also has some strong production all across the board on some of the songs such as Creator SOS, which features some dope guitar riffs, some smooth vocals from Hell Supreme. And just to add the cherry on top, you got the nice drumming from Wolfgang Hafner. This song is buttery smooth. There were also reggae vibes in some of the spots on this record. Tracks like Breathe In featuring Oshan. And then a few of my favorite tracks off this record are Own Me, which presents us some 70s vibes. And also the track Isolated, which might be one of my favorite tracks of the year. Uh, This features beautiful vocals from Pip Millet. And if you're not up on Pip Millet, what are you doing with your life? Please look her up. You will really appreciate her discography. And it feels like I'm just riding off in the sunset in Aruba. All in all, I really enjoyed this project by Wax. The consistency in the sounds, the well-placed features, and the deep lyricism from some of the featured artists really makes this album stand out as one of Nightmare on Wax's best albums he's dropped in quite some time. He's got me back with this project, and I really appreciate it. I give this one a 8 out of 10. Do yourself a favor and treat yourself to a magnificent experience. Next, we got Haona Broken Land LP. And with Broken Land, producer Daniel Nitch, which his producer uh, name is 
I'll have that spelling right there for you if you don't know how to spell that. But and I hope I'm saying that right. No, sorry, Daniel, if you're watching this review. Now, Broken Land gives us a variety of styles and sounds here, ranging from early 90s trip hop stripped down to an ambient and downbeat electronic blend of sound. We have MC Afro who drops some fire bars over a tricky influence beat on the track Revolution. If you don't know who Tricky is, he's a trip hop artist. Uh, look him up. Good music. Very good feature from Afro on that one. And he also contributes to the Deep House Cut Layback Misery, which is an excellent track. What I love about the album is that he plays with words in a production sort of way, giving you different content on every track, thought-provoking soundscapes, and very mellow theatrics as you continue your listening experience. I thoroughly enjoyed this project. If you are a fan of groups like Massive Attack, Portis Head, or Tricky, you will find this project an excellent addition to your music library. I give this one an 8.75 out of 10. Up next, we got Julian Dine with his new project, his fifth studio album, Modes. I discovered him back with his 2014 release, Pins and Digits. This album had a dwelly like neo soul, a loud type feel to it, which really drew me uh, to his music. However, since that release, we found Julian experimenting with different sounds, aiming more towards a chill wave, synth pop, electronic sounds that mimic the likes of groups like Hot Chips or Toro Ima or Beck when he dropped that 2006 project, The Information. However, this new release, we find Julian channeling his inner house music roots. And as this album kind of reminds me of house music that you will find played at a house party convention or a house party in the late 70s, early 80s in Chicago. The track with you is a perfect example of that with vocals from Alicia Joy, which, which gives you that feel, that, that Chicago house music feel. Now, I won't go into a track for track review of this album. This effort was a step up from his previous album, Teal. Maybe because I'm a sucker for house music vibes. That's just me. But I really enjoyed the versatility of all the tracks. The tracks didn't sound redundant. And all the tracks didn't sound alike, even though it's a house record. All in all, perfect album to play in the background. Or if you want something that is just easy to listen to, give this one a shot. It has some good mellow spots on there, but definitely a nice album to chill to. And I give this one a 7.75 out of 10. Up next, we got DJ Harrison, Tales from the Dominion. I couldn't wait to get to this one, you guys. This is one of my favorites. DJ Harrison, AKA Devon Harris, released a new album entitled Tales from the Old Dominion via Stone Throws Records. And this is DJ Harrison's second studio album. Although he has tons of separate instrumental projects such as Monotones, Stash Box, and Songs About Her, which are all exceptional beat tapes. So check those out if you're not familiar with his work. Tales from the Old Dominion, the record at hand, is a ode to the experimental neo soul that was prevalent in the late 90s and early 2000s. If you're a fan of the likes of Bilal, Sara, Omar, or even D'Angelo, uh, which I would say the voodoo version of D'Angelo, this record is packed with all the goods. Blending soul, funk, rock, and hip hop together over some very spaced out, breakbeat style production. And, and they, DJ Harrison does not sell us short on the upbeat track list, which might be an acquired taste for some, but pleasant to the ears for those who love some good old fashioned boom bap produced tracks. Like this. Although there's a few speed bumps on this record it's far from perfect but when it delivers it delivers in every shape and form if you have a playlist dedicated to instrumentals or soul music 
look down in that description and add some of the songs that I recommend from this album uh, to your list. It's 17 tracks. Uh, there's a lot to choose from. A lot of good features on this project as well. So you are really going to enjoy it. Overall, I give this one an 8. 75 out of 10 really enjoyed this album most notably check out the track Kawhi voyage i actually posted it on the coffee and beats instagram page he actually reposted my post on his page so he really appreciated the love and i, and I always like to support artists like dj harrison people that's just trying to get their music out there not there trying to put on a facade or anything like that he's just out there putting good music and it needs to be heard i'm using this show this platform to help get that music out there so that people like the fans of this show can listen to it and appreciate it so dj harrison keep up the good work appreciate the repost just want to add that to the show and last but not least, we got some EP love in the building. L. Michael's Affair, the abominable EP. And L. Michael's Affair follows up a massive success of their full-length Yeti season project earlier this year. Now, I myself personally wasn't a huge fan of that album. It was decent, but I wasn't wild about it. But here we have a collection of unreleased tracks alternative takes on some of the songs and instrumentals from the yeti season record sessions now it features nine songs clocking in at around 28 minutes and after listening to this project i was saying to myself this is what i really wanted to hear i was not wowed about yeti season so listening to this ep it was refreshing to listen to. Although there were a few spots where I do agree with L. Michaels not putting certain songs on the original album, for example, songs like Messy Grass or Uncut Gem, which I felt were okay, but I wouldn't have been losing sleep not knowing that these songs didn't feature on the album. But the rest of this EP, my goodness, from the hard-hitting track Cham Cham, which has great vocals, a hard-hitting boom bap beat, to the creative and distinctive sounds of a track like Progress. These tracks felt like they belonged on the original LP. I recommend this album to all my hip-hop heads and enthusiasts alike, and you really will enjoy this album. I give this one a pretty good out of 10. I don't rate EP, so just a pretty good out of 10. L. Michaels is on fire this year. Keep it coming, my brother. And that will do it for this episode of Coffee and Beats. Again, I'm your musical barista, Rod the Magnificent. Thanks for watching the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell and share. And also, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast available on all podcasting platforms. And also follow the Instagram as well. I mean, musical barista, Rod the Magnificent. And when it comes to coffee, when it comes to beats or music or whatever you like to listen to stay grounded for life i will see you on the next one peace